Welcome to Turning Hard Times into Good Times. I'm your host, Jay Taylor, and I'm also the author of a newsletter, Jay Taylor's Gold Energy and Tech Stocks. And my company, Taylor Hard Money Advisors, uh, is also in partnership with Chen Lin, who publishes What is Chen Buying? What is Chen Selling? To sign up either for Chen's letter or my own, go to miningstocks.com, uh, or you can call our office in New York during regular business hours uh, at 718-457-1426, 718-457-1426. I do want to thank each of you for listening to the show, making one of the more popular shows on the Voice America Business Channel. I'd like to encourage you to keep your questions uh, coming, questions, comments, criticisms, praises, what have you, to questions for Taylor at gmail.com. That's questions, the number for Taylor at gmail.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at jtaylormedia. Uh, also want to thank our sponsors for making this show economically viable. For today's show, our sponsors are Novo Resources, Cornerstone Capital Resources, and Balmoral Resources. Before I get into today's show, I do want to tell you uh, that on my website at jtaylormedia.com, I interviewed Gianni Kovacevic of Copper Bank, and uh, I have trouble pronouncing his name, as you can tell, um, but I would invite you to go there to listen to what he has to say about the future of copper in a world that is increasingly moving towards green energy. Uh, and copper, of course, uh, is, is one of those metals that's used on an ongoing basis. Uh, unlike gold, which is stored in, uh, in, in vaults, copper is it's constantly being used in industry, although right now, obviously, uh, with the slowdown in China and elsewhere, uh, there are uh, downward pressures on the on the metal, but Gianni, uh, his copper bank, which trades in Canada, is currently selling at a mere three and a half cents. Uh, it is in the process. His company is in the process of gobbling up uh, copper projects that are out of the money prospects and projects right now, with the view that when copper turns around, uh, there will be some big profits to be made. We did the same thing with Seabridge Gold many years ago in my newsletter. One of the biggest winners I've ever had was uh, Seabridge Gold, which bought into copper uh, into gold projects at, at that time uh, that were clearly out of the money when gold was selling at three or four hundred dollars. You needed eight or nine hundred dollar gold to make sense of them. Well, that company went out and bought those gold projects, uh, and uh, then when gold finally rose, it was a, a phenomenal success story for Seabridge Gold. I think. Uh, Giovanni Kovacevic uh, of Copper Bank has a chance to do equally well. So uh, listen to his interview with me at, uh, uh, at jtaylormedia.com. Well, I've titled today's show, The Gods of Money, Wall Street and the Death of the American Century. My main guest today is uh, William Angdahl. He is a rare breed among historians because he is not bought and paid for by a small ruling elite that control our banking media and political system, as I'm, so- I'm sorry to say is the case of most historians these days. Well, most Ivy League historians go on to live a charmed lifestyle and publishing propaganda that helps the existing order to continue picking the pockets of common folks uh, for the benefit of Wall Street and military-industrial complex. At least that's my view and the views of many of our guests on this show. But Engdahl uh, is one Ivy Leaguer who escaped the grasp of the CFR and other related paid-for think tanks. He will talk, uh, I will have William on today um, from his home in Germany, where he will explain some of the main topics in his book, Gods of Money, uh, really a very excellent read and very interesting read, agree or disagree with it, uh, fabulous book and uh, one that he is in the process of updating. Well, right now, uh, actually in about a quarter of an hour after our first break, I'm going to be talking to Brooke McDonald. He's the director uh, and president, CEO of Cornerstone Capital, and his chief geologist, Yvonne Crepu, uh, he's the chief uh, with the Cornerstone Capital, Yvonne uh, will explain some of the exploration efforts of the company, but despite its very low share price, I think the stock has the potential to provide invent- investors with uh, a tenfold or better gain once the metals prices turn around. I think the reason for my optimism will become clear to you if you listen to what uh, both Brooke and Yvonne have to say uh, about this company's progress with their copper gold project in uh, Ecuador. So I will be talking to them after immediately after the first commercial break. But right now, I'm really happy to have with me once again Michael Oliver. Uh, before I say hello to Michael, let me encourage you to jot down his website address if you haven't already done so. Uh, and really consider going there, checking out his work, because he, he really does some outstanding work. I've really gained a lot of confidence in Michael's work. Read it every day. He sends something almost every day to his subscribers. That website is Oliver MSA. 
Mary Sam Albert, OliverMSA.com. Welcome, Michael. Thanks for joining me again today. Great to be here, Jay. Always good to have you here. We only have a few minutes, so I want to get right, cut right to the chase here on, on our favorite medals. You know, yesterday you put out a missive to your subscribers suggesting that we might look for some weakness possibly in the dollar index. What are you seeing that suggests the dollar could be nearing a, a peak here? And we have had quite a run for sure over the last two, three, four years, I guess it is. But what right. are you seeing uh, that really uh, can uh, cause you to think we may be seeing a top? Well, it's entirely technical. Uh, to deal with fundamentals of uh, uh, fiat currencies is like you know comparing a rotten apple and a rotten orange. Or so, you know, so it's difficult for me to get my yeah. head around that issue. The technicals are pretty clear. Several years ago, it was a very bullish situation for the dollar based on its annual momentum. It's back when it was at 77 to the low 80s on the dollar index, and we took a very a positive view looking out a few years, and actually the target was 100. We, it wasn't because it was a round number. I had some swing objectives that said 100. We reached 100 in March. And since then, we've gone into a trading range in the dollar index, with lows down around 94, just below, and, and uh, highs below that 100 mark. Recently, we got back up to 98. The problem was that uh, a lot of the intermediate technicals, the things that tend to last for several months, did do some damage uh, early this week. And it looks to me like the dollar on an intermediate basis is in some trouble, and it could very well be that that high at 100 was it. Uh, not that when you make a high in a market, you have to precipitously collapse, but you, you, know, you make a high and you do enough damage after the high, then you look back and say, well, that was it. Um, if this decline um, picks up some steam, and I think it has a chance, I think on the other side of that balance, you'll th- see things like the yen, which has uh, technical potentials, in my view, that could be quite strong, which would be destabilizing for the Nikkei, of course. But gold and silver look like they should benefit from it. Uh, they have, after all, if you go back three years or so, well, where was gold? It was as high, and that's the point where the dollar turned up through its annual momentum structure. So there is some inverse relationship there that's pretty solid. So if the dollar, in fact, has had its party peak in March of this year at 100 and done enough topping action to turn down, uh, not, and not that it has to be precipitous, just, just turn down, I think the beneficiaries will be gold and silver on the front end of the commodity spectrum. Uh, other commodity markets that might be benefited by a softening dollar, which, by the way, nobody's looking for. All of these Wall Street guys that got bullish on the dollar did so this last year or so. In other words, they were late to the party, and mm-hmm. they're still bullish on it. Uh, haven't, in fact, I haven't seen anybody lately looking for weakness, which, which I'm looking for right now. But I think on a near-term basis, that could definitely scoot gold and, and silver up out of this hole. Uh, and uh, so I, I think that that balance is important. Uh, that if the dollar does weaken, I think gold will get some benefit, uh, and mm-hmm. possibly enough to put it far enough off its low in terms of my momentum work uh, to not revisit the low again. All right. What are some key numbers for gold that you're looking for well, right they, now, they Michael, to make you confident week. that we're on to something yeah. better and uh, for the bulls? Well, the, right now I'd say you get up to eleven. 11- 30 to 11.40 zone, you've probably uh, rescued yourself enough at that point not to come back through the low. I've got some uh, what I'd call intermediate term positive breakouts that occur there, not on price charts, but on momentum. I've got three layers, actually. I've got a 10-page report I put out last weekend, more or less a hand-holding report to investors about how do I get long gold or silver or the gold miners. And it took me about 10 pages to lay out the roadmap. And mm-hmm. it's a layered process, so there's no, not one magical number. But sure. I have three, three numbers that if you go through them, each hurdle that you go through, your confidence rises. The highest number I've got applicable to this quarter is 1233. Uh, next quarter, that number will adjust down to about 1210. That's the highest number. But mm. between uh, here and there, we've got the, I think the 1130, 1140 zone looks very potent. Uh, we've been up over 1,100 the last few days, uh, intraday. So we're talking a couple percent beyond this week's high. You start mm-hmm. to engage some positive factors. Uh, mm-hmm. So it, 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 won't, it won't take a lot. So if the dollar does weaken, uh, and it started to, it's already dropped a point and a half from that recent high, uh, 98 down to 96 and a half, that uh, this, the goal could scoot up out of here. And frankly, I don't see many people looking for that uh, any kind of sharp dollar weakness and most people are not looking for a gold recovery. No. You know, the no, crowd out fact, there is now, you know, it's 800 to 1,000. And, 
Yeah, you know, in fact, we got there, we, it'd be six hundred or whatever. <laughs> you know, it's a, yeah, in fact, what we've seen yeah. recently, uh, you know, reports that uh, hedge funds are a uh, first time ever net low, uh, net short on gold. So I would think, Michael, also that this could tie in. Uh, you know, the the bullishness for the dollar is tied in with this sort of belief in the. Uh, in the tooth fairy that the that the Federal Reserve actually has things under control they're going to be able to raise interest rates of course the interest rates mm-hmm. uh, the they keep getting delayed interest rate rises and I have my doubts uh, that but that's, could be that's, why the dollar is weakening its potential yeah. because after all the, the of the central banks around the world that account Japan Europe and us uh, those two are on, on a downside still in terms of rate direction what they're trying to achieve anyway it's not occurring yeah. because the markets yeah. are broken from them but Our central bank is presumably more neutral in that issue. Well, that's boosted the dollar because the perception of our rates will be uh, higher than other rates, therefore makes the dollar more attractive. Well, what if that's not going to happen? I suspect it's not going to happen. And well, you and I are yeah, you and I are on the same page on that, Michael. I, I just, yeah. you know, we've had delay after delay, delay after delay since, uh, you know, since we've been promised in Bernanke's days higher rates, and they just don't come because the the mm-hmm. economy, in my view, is so wretched. Uh, they can't afford to raise rates, but that's 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 a that's a fundamentalist speaking. And you let the, uh, you know, you let the truth machine. That is the machine that comes the the truth that comes through the numbers uh, that you. Uh, uh, pull together for us so kindly. Thank you very much. Michael, for those uh, insights, we are out of time, unfortunately, but we do hope to have you back for a little longer next week, uh, and we can pick your brains uh, more extensively next Look week if you're willing to let Look us do that. Thank, Thank you, you very much. 